What is up everybody, it is Ock here, back with another video. In today's video, we're gonna be going through the Strat 1 pool with as little gear as possible. I'm actually going to break down the math beyond how we can figure out how much gear we need, give you guys a Google Doc that you guys can go ahead and plug in your gear, and actually give you an example gear set of easy to get gear that you can get before you even hit level 70 or very shortly after hitting level 70 that you can actually do Strat with. And then I'm gonna go into Strat and actually show you guys how to do the pool with gear that is equivalent to the gear that I'm gonna show you guys how to get. Before we get started though, huge shout out to Ted J who made a phenomenal strat video breaking down the pools, where mobs spawn and things like that. Highly recommend checking out that video by Ted J. I'll have it linked down in the description down below. I'm gonna also go into the pools and go through the important things that I think that you guys will need to be able to pull it off. So it's a comprehensive guide, so you don't need to bounce around to a bunch of different videos, but his video is phenomenal and breaks down everything really, really well. I wanted to make this video though because I get a ton of questions on my stream at twitch.tv slash Elias about the minimum gear requirements, what I need to pull off the strat farm. And so I wanted to make this video breaking down the exact gear that I would recommend so you guys can go in and you guys can fly through the strat farm yourself. When we're thinking about the strat farm or any farm really, we have three components we wanna think about. We wanna think about the stats that we have for the overall mitigation, the overall avoidance. We wanna think about the damage that we're gonna take per second and the healing that we're gonna be able to do per second to kinda of see if we're gonna be able to live comfortably. And then we wanna think about the kill time and how long is it gonna take and any additional cooldowns that we can pop. So basically guys, what I've done is I've built you out a gear set and I'm gonna show you guys that gear set in a second of easy to obtain items. These are gonna be items from quests or you know, maybe you have to run a couple dungeons for some and there's one item that is a little bit annoying to get but it is 100% worth it because it's BIS for AOE farming all the way through TBC and into Waddle K. From that set, we were able to get these stats that we have right here. And so basically guys, what I've been telling people in my stream is that if you have 480 defense and if you have 350 spell power, you should be fine. Those guidelines were based upon these kind of calculations, but I wanna break down those calculations for you and then give you this Excel so that you guys can go ahead and kind of manipulate it to your own stats with your own gear if you already have some gear or show you guys exactly what I would recommend getting to do the farm. I'm actually gonna use a gear set that has less stats than this while doing the farm to show you guys that it is 100% possible with these stats pretty safely as you'll see. So the first thing, guys, is just the stats themselves. So we just plug in our block dodge parry miss. I'm gonna try to be as quick as possible with all this. Our defense mob level. And because the mob level is a bit lower, they have a lower inherent hit, which means that because our defense is high, we get additional miss from them. And then on top of that, because we're level 70 and they're 58, we have an inherent additional 9.6% avoidance. You guys can check out all these formulas. I believe they're right. If they're not, I apologize. Fix them on your guys' side and they should be good, but they should be right. That gives us our overall actual block dodge parry miss. Now I broke this out into individual stats because when we get to damage and healing, when we're thinking about what damage we're actually blocking versus completely mitigating, it's important to have these kind of stats broken out. But overall, we can see here that we have a 73.12% avoidance. So in theory, we'll be hit 27% of the time. Now we can go over to the damage and healing. So the melee mob count is going to be about 35, caster mob count about 32. These are, you know, rough estimates of the kill phases. Each kill phase is going to be a little bit different, but we just want to think holistically here. The melee swing timer, and because we're also doing healing, by the way, this is going to kind of scale. So if we take a little bit more damage, we're also going to get a little bit more healing for the 20 seconds that we have figurine popped. So it's going to scale pretty well. Melee swing timer of two seconds for each mob the amount of blocked damage. Now this is actually really important. Your player block value is actually important here because if you have too low of a block value, you won't mitigate the entire attack from the mob. Now this is actually a good thing if you wanna wear skull flame shield. So if you get your block value lower and then you wear skull flame shield, which will also bring down your block value because it's not a tanking shield in TBC, you'll probably get hit, but when you block, be able to block the majority of the hit which means that Skull Flame Shield will be proccing more, healing you more, and then also doing damage. So this actually is a big kind of pro to Skull Flame Shield if you want to run lower block value. But once we do all that, we can figure out the actual damage that we take per mob, damage per second from the mob, and get the overall damage per second that we're taking from the mobs that we have. Then we can go to the casters. Casters is a rough estimate, basically because you're level 70, they have about a 1% hit chance, which I got from a bunch of research on different sites on how to calculate the spell hit. Caster cast time, caster hits per second, rough damage for the actual damage that it'll do, about 150. So caster damage per second is about 24. It's pretty minimal. 
Then from there, we can go into our healing with figurine. So figurine has 120 every single time that it ticks that it'll heal you for. Holy shield charges, we have six with our talents. If you wanna run different talents, you could have eight. So then we can calculate the holy shield chance. Basically guys, what I'm doing here is that when we proc it, we have an additional 30% chance to get the proc. And then those procs last the mobs hits or divided by the mobs hits times 10. So basically 160. Same kind of thing with redoubt here. We get a redoubt chance for basically just trying to get the entire time that redoubt would be up. And so between holy shield and redoubt, we can get an additional block chance of about 28 or total block chance of about 28%. So we get an additional, you know, block chance of roughly about four to 5%. So that means that we're going to get about 4.9% procs per second from our figurine, which will heal us for 597.46 per second. Now what I'm actually finding in practice is it's a bit more than this, but this is just a rough estimate again, guys. So then we can get to our actual kill time. So the mobs have about 8,000 health. This is taken from one mob. It will scale differently. And the berserker is going to have 16,000, but we'll be focusing him. So we'll be able to take him out along the way. Consecrate his base damage of 512. And then we can look at all of our buffs. Now our spell power unbuff with this set is about 330. We have Librum, and then we have consumables. So these consumables are going to be food, blessed wizard oil, great arcane elixir. So the combination of those three is going to get us up to 100 additional spell power. We then have Rathus and Arya spell power, which is I highly, highly recommend just because it's 132 because of the amount of mobs that we're hitting. It's almost 100% of time. And then we have our trinket spell power. Now I'm going to show you guys a low level trinket. You guys can get much better trinkets than this for the proc. If you have ZHC or if you can get the badges, trinkets can be much better. But then we can get our trinket proc time. Now, unfortunately, I can't get this to be exactly correct because I have to base this off of the total time alive. Otherwise, we'll have circular references for the kill time. But basically what I did here was for the trinket, I did 120 times 15 divided by the total time alive. So you're only getting about 40 additional spell power from it. Unfortunately, we can't base it off that 41 damage unless we hard code that, which you can do. So then we have our consecrate base damage. From here, we could take any kind of multiplicative effect that we have from our damage. So we have Vengeance, for example. I estimated it at about 10% because it's not going to be up 100% of the fight. Once you get to three stacks, it'll be at three stacks for the rest of the time. But it will take a little bit to get to three stacks, so I just estimated it at 10%, giving us a total increase of about 30%. Then you can get your Consecrate full damage, Consecrate damage per tick, Blessing of Sanctuary damage, get your total damage per second, and then the kill time based on the mobs health. Then you can basically calculate how long you can live for. So figurine time, 20 seconds. Divine shield, 10 seconds. Health, 9,847. Now this gives you additional survivability of about 14.43 seconds because it will take them about 14 seconds to take you from full to dead with this health. So the total time alive will give us about 44.43. And as long as this total time alive is better than this kill time, we are good to go and we should be able to do the kill. So this is how we can calculate how to actually, you know, figure out if we're able to do the farm. You guys can plug in your own stats. If the formula is, if you think that something needs to be changed, feel free to change it. But this should give you an idea of what you need to be able to pull off this farm. So real quickly, let's run through the gear itself. So most of this gear, I'm not going to run through all the pieces, are going to be from quests. A lot of this gear, like Spiritual Gauntlets, Karen Vars, etc., Cloak of the Valiant Defender, Kylian Spalders, those are from Netherstorm Southeast quests. Also, the Dells Bracers, I believe, are from Netherstorm. A couple drop, or a couple are drops from dungeons. So you got Breastplate of the Righteous. You have Myrmidons, which is a quest item from a dungeon. You have Figurine of the Colossus. Flesh Beast is a quest. Platinum is a drop, but they're easy drops to get, right? We're not talking heroic dungeons. We're not talking. Uh, any crazy difficult dungeons or anything like that. Most of this gear you can actually get while you level up. The one piece that will take a little bit longer probably is going to be Wrath of Cenarius. I do have a full comprehensive guide on how to get it in about six to seven hours. It's going to depend on your server and how much availability for items that you'll need for the actual farm are there. But check out that guide. Wrath of Cenarius is 100% worth it because it increases your spell damage by 132 for 10 seconds. It has a 5% chance to proc, and so if you're hitting a lot of mobs with Consecrate, there's a very good chance you're going to have Wrath of Cenarius up, and that 132 spell power is basically like a permanent on-use trinket. So I highly recommend trying to get Wrath of Cenarius. So what I did, guys, just to show you exactly how we can do this farm with that gear is I went into strat and I downgraded my gear a little bit to have about the same stat. So I actually have 1% less avoidance here than the, than the build that I have on the 70 upgrade site. But you can see my defense is at 475. If I go over to spell power, I'm at 431. 
Now, if you remember from the Excel, that's 330 as the base spell power plus 100 for consumables. So technically I have one more spell power than you will have from consumables. <laughs> Sorry about it. Um, but I just basically put on Blessed Wizard Oil on top of what gear I had. Unfortunately, I've gotten rid of a lot of the green, so I wouldn't be able to do the exact same gear. I will have a little bit more armor than you guys will have, but it shouldn't be much of a difference against these mobs at all, as you'll see during the actual kills. So now that we have that gear, we can run through the actual farm itself. Again, huge shout out to Ted J for his video. He goes very well into depth about all the different things that you can use and all the different and how to do the actual pools. And so definitely check out his video if you want. I'm going to be going through them pretty quickly, pointing out the important things to know along the way, just so it is a comprehensive guide. I do also have Consecrate taking or costing 15% less mana, but you should never have mana issues if you keep up Seal of Wisdom, which we'll talk about in just a second. So I reset my farm log so we can keep track of the gold as well, and I reset my timer. Go ahead and open up this gate. Now what you want to be using, guys, to aggro is rank 1 Seal of Righteousness with the Judgment, and then rank 1 Exorcism. So here I'm going to target this mob. I'm going to rank 1 Judgment him as I run around the house. We're going to run around the back side of the house. We're going to probably get hit by a couple casts as we go around, but it should be fine. And then we're going to cut across. We're going to target the far right group and hit them with a rank 1 Exorcism to pull them. Doesn't matter which mob you pull, just pull one of the mobs in the right group. This will automatically aggro this group. And then I recommend just spamming D-Spell on yourself whenever there's a Frostbolt about to be cast. So my D-Spell is on scroll, so I basically just scroll my mouse over and over. Now Hearth Glen, whatever his name is, could be right here, or he could be in a different spot. And so if he's right there, make sure you run up to him and hit him with a Judgment to pull him. Otherwise, pull that back group and then cut across. The second spot he could be is right here. He's not there this time as well, which means he has to be in the third spot, which we'll see in the third pool. But now we're able to get into the actual kill phase. We're going to put Seal of Wisdom and then Judgment the Patrick Horror before we actually start the kill phase. Then we're going to reseal a Wisdom. Now, this is important so we can keep up our mana at all times. So you can see we're about 56 health, 56% 56 health. Had we gotten slowed by Hamstring during the run, put Freedom on yourself, and then rebuff Blessing a Sanctuary when we got to the kill phase. We don't need to buff Blessing a Sanctuary, though, because we are already in the kill phase and we're fine. Here, I would recommend dropping Consecrate before you swap over to Sanctity Aura, because... Sancti Diora will prospectively apply the damage increase to Consecrate. However, I always swap over to Sanctuary just because it's habit. So I swap over to Sancti Diora, and now we drop down to Consecrate. Now you're going to notice something. I automatically have Wrath of Scenarius procs, but I'm actually not going to proc my on use yet. I actually waited until I had two stacks of Vengeance, or my figurine was about 10 seconds left. So figurine of the Colossus is going to give us 20 seconds of healing, keeping us up at full, if we have enough block chance, which... The build has block chance so make sure you have around 20 percent block chance whatever kind of build you have after that we have bop or divine shield which in this case on the first pool we're going to want to use bop and so we're going to bop ourselves and that means that we have 20 seconds of invulnerability basically we're going to keep ourselves up to full with our figurine or bop and so i don't actually want to pop my on use until vengeance has stacked up to about two stacks so that we can get the maximum damage possible from vengeance from there, guys, it's really just meleeing the patchwork horror, keeping up your seal of wisdom, and then just popping consecrate. If you get punted out of your position, just backpedal back into the corner. Make sure you're in the corner, though, guys, because if the mobs do hit you from behind, they could, you know, completely avoid your mitigation, which can cause some issues. Especially when you actually are aggroing up the mobs, make sure you're always having them hitting you from the front. So we got down about 40%. The mobs are getting down pretty low. I went ahead and popped bop making sure that I'm keeping Consecrate on cooldown. Consecrate's number one priority. And then I just heal myself up for the little bit of health that I need. Step away slowly as the mobs start to die. So that's something that a lot of people don't do. As the mobs start to die, and I'll just go back just a second here, you're going to see that I just kind of move out of the group. Reason being, if the mobs don't die before they explode, you're probably going to take a ton of damage and die. But their explode radius is not huge. So as long as we step back a little bit, they'll die before Consecrate or they'll die from Consecrate before they even explode, but if they did explode, we wouldn't be close enough to actually take the damage. That's the first pool, though, guys. We'll have Farm Log running. Let's skip ahead to the second pool. Once you get full mana, we're going to go over to the left side here, go through the gate, and go to the other side. There's also a chest back there sometimes, so just go ahead and loot the chest. And we're going to get started with the second pool. Make sure you reapply a Blessing and Sanctuary if you did use Bop on the first pool. If you don't, if you have really good gear, you probably don't even need to use it. But if you did use it, make sure you reapply a Blessing and Sanctuary. This is going to be the most dangerous pool of all of them because it's going to have the most mobs and you're going to be cutting across the middle a lot. So make sure to always have the mobs hitting you from the front. Run forward to the very end, Exorcism this last mob. Now these mobs will auto-aggro these guys, so don't get close enough to aggro them. 
And then these guys are actually gonna pull with a rank one Consecrate as you run by. So try to max range pull these guys with a Consecrate. You can see they pull the Berserker there and then hug the outside so we don't face tank those mobs as well. This keeps the mobs far away from us. We're gonna run over to the right group, pop Judgment on him, and then we're gonna to cut to the outside, do a little jump 180 turn right there, and then we're kiting right here. So we do get slowed, so we dispel ourselves. There's also a really good chance you're gonna get hamstrung right here. So if you get hamstrung, make sure you pop freedom on yourself. Now over in the corner, we're gonna exorcism the backpack. There can be a courier that comes with the backpack. That courier can stun you. So in the kill phase, if you see that you're stunned and you're taking a ton of damage, that is probably why, that's why I like to save divine shield because there's a very good chance we're gonna be taking a good amount of damage here. We're then gonna judgment the patch of work of horror just like again, and then get into the corner. Now here guys, it's very important to get into the corner fast because the guy can punch you. And if he punts you up onto the top, then you have to jump down from the top very quickly. So it's important to get into a good position. And when you get into your position, you're actually gonna spawn these rats as well. So you're gonna be able to heal yourself very, very easily with figurine as soon as you pop it. So here, we get them all there, we get to about 50% health, so I pop figurine. You can wait until you get to about 30% health. Do not kind of tempt figurine though. If figurine is, or if your health is getting low, just pop figurine. Don't try to wait till the last second because you could just not get a block and then die. So make sure you pop figurine early. Again, here guys, we waited until three sacks of vengeance. Then we popped our on-use trinket to pump down the damage. Patchwork horror, we are exercising on cooldown as well since we have free GCDs. Another thing to keep in mind, guys, is that when we have figurine of the Colossus, if we pop Holy Shield, we have a higher chance to proc our blocks, which means use Holy Shield to your advantage. When your health is going down, pop Holy Shield with figurine on and you will very quickly get back up like 30% of your health. So use Holy Shield to your advantage. Here we can tell that they're about half, or they're actually closer to dead. We just ran out of our figurine though. We're down about 30%. So I pop my bubble here, heal myself up with keeping Consecrate. Same exact idea as the last kill phase, guys. Exorcism on cooldown, keep up your Seal of Wisdom and keep the Judgment up on the main Berserker. You're gonna be perfectly fine on mana and you're gonna be able to burn down these mobs. Once you get down past, you know, around 30% health, that's when we pop the figurine of the Colossus pop our holy shield, quickly heal back up to full, and then we sit there for about 20 seconds just pumping out as much damage as possible. Our goal is to get our vengeance stacks to three stacks as, pos as fast as possible, and then go ahead and pop our on use trinket so that we can burn down these mobs quickly. We're now ready for the third pool. I'm gonna set the HM quality to epic so that it doesn't you know, show the auction house kind of value of farm lock. So we're gonna go through here and we're gonna cut over to the right. We're trying to go over and spawn the Unforgiven. Now there's mobs past the Unforgiven and so you wanna make sure that you run past the Unforgiven and aggro those mobs, especially keeping an eye out for the Berserker. The Berserker pat's right through here. So if he's at the far point and he's right in here, make sure you go aggro the Berserker just like we do here. Otherwise, aggro these couple of ghouls. So here we're gonna aggro the Berserker which automatically aggroes that other ghoul and then we aggro these two ghoul ghouls on the side. Run through here, consecrate these ghouls as we run by and then cut to the outside. Hopefully not just aggroing those guys from running into them, but there we do. Now, Hearthsinger was not up in the previous two locations where he could be, so we know that he will 100% be here, so pull him as we go through. He does have a range attack, which isn't too bad to deal with, but just, you know, know that he does have a range attack. You can also get a curse during this pool, which reduces the healing that you do by 75%, so that's kind of annoying as well. That's one benefit of having Divine Shield for this pool, but I just pop wings personally, typically, or if you want to be very safe, which I try to be here, we pop bop again and you should be perfectly fine but we aggro up all those mobs we cut back across go into the opposite corner this time inside that room with the rats and again same thing as normal we get down to 30 percent health i pop figurine of the colossus i do get punted up in the air there guys so i did get stuck up on the tops so of some of the mobs evaded which means that they're going to have more health again so i'm going to backpedal back into the corner and then continue with my normal kill rotation so now we're on the opposite corner so now i only have four seconds left of holy shield or sorry, of figuring of the Colossus. And so I'm going to go ahead and pop my on use. And I know that I'm probably not gonna be able to get all these mobs down before I would personally die. So I'm gonna need to make sure that I'm ready to use bop. I'm gonna get punted up into the air again, jump down immediately so that they do not just start healing themselves, put bop on myself, but I do have this curse which reduces the healing effects by 75%. So I still do heal myself because I have nothing better to do basically while sitting in bot, but it doesn't heal for a ton. Doesn't matter though, because we're able to burn down these mobs because we have enough spell power to take them out and then we are good to go. And that is all of the mobs. So you can see here at the end that we're able to kill 344 mobs. We did start with 75 though, so it's about 270 mobs 
per run. We did it all in seven minutes and 47 seconds, and our overall gold per hour is about 260 gold per hour. Now that is, again, in seven minutes and 55 seconds, and we will loot here. I spun a repair bot just so I can actually vendor to show you guys how much gold we're gonna get, but we're probably gonna be more so looking at about 225 gold just from loot. If you're an enchanter, you can also disenchant the blues, and depending on the price of large, brilliant shards on your server, you can probably make a good amount of extra gold just from those blues alone. And so Ted J quoted in his, his video, I agree with what he was quoting, 300 gold per hour if you have enchanting, 225 gold per hour if you do not have enchanting and you're just going based off of loot. If you're boosting tunes, what I found is about 20 gold per run per spot. It's kind of hard to fill the groups, but if you're able to fill the groups, that means you can also get an additional 80 gold per run you will get less raw gold because obviously you're not looting all the gold yourself. And so you will get less raw gold, but plus the additional 80 gold per run for 320 gold per hour, it will 100% be worth it if you can get the boost. If you feel really bold, you can try to double up the last pool or pull these next mobs I'm about to show you as a fourth pool as well. But basically the pools inside of this room right here are a little bit more difficult to handle. They heal themselves, they slow you with a better chance to hit you from what I'm seeing. And then they also basically fly you across the map. So they're kind of a pain to deal with. There's a lot of ranged mobs, so they're gonna do a lot of damage. But here on my stream, I was running through and I was trying to pull them with all the other mobs. So you can see that we're getting punted across, but basically you aggro the mobs right in front of the door, and then you can go ahead and kind of run out of there and they will punch you. If you do pull these mobs, you have to try to get to this location as quickly as possible with our normal kill location right within the rats. Or if you're trying to do it all in one pool, we're actually going to try to go all the way back to our first kill location to try to deal with them. However, what you're gonna see is that even with this pool, I'm gonna to have to use lay on hands because they actually pump out so much damage that I would not be able to survive from the mobs. You can also see that just from the pool itself, I'm already down to 43% health, which means I have to pop figurine pretty much immediately. And then these mobs actually start to run away because they're humanoids when they get low, scattering the mobs all over the place so I can't even kill them with Consecrate. So I don't recommend doing this pool until you have really good gear. This is with my good gear on, so I'm actually able to kill them. But I also have a ridiculous amount of spell power, something like 890 when everything is procced. But you can see I go into the corner. I'm gonna go ahead and try to burn down the mobs, pop figurine when I'm almost dead because I know that I need as much time as possible. It starts getting real laggy on the stream, which is actually pretty wild. Uh, go ahead and get everything rolling. I do have bubble, so I'm gonna make sure that I save bubble to use it at the last second possible. I didn't get a ton of heals because since there's a lot more casters with this group from the inside, I actually am not getting healed as much. So I go ahead and bubble at as low of health as possible and start healing myself up to full with holy light. That is gonna cause me to run out of mana, drop down another consecrate, heal myself up at the last tick, but now you can see these mobs are running away. So my plan here is basically to swap over to the other side. If I swap over to the other side, then I'm hoping that these mobs are gonna to try to run up to catch up to me. And so I get into the corner on this side. However, still run into issues where the mobs can just sit out there in the open and still cast on me. So all the mobs are not gonna stack up and the healers are actually gonna to continue to heal. So now I get start getting down most of the mobs. I have just the Unforgiven and then some mobs left after that. But the problem is that I'm pretty much oom because I had to bubble and heal myself fully. So like I said, guys, I wouldn't recommend trying to do this pool. There's healers, there's casters, there's melee that have holy strikes. So they hit you through all your mitigation just because holy damage goes straight through all the mitigation. And I basically needed to use everything possible in order to try to even get them down. And ultimately, I think with like two mobs down on or two mobs left on this pool, since I didn't have lay on hands, I think I actually did go ahead and die. So don't recommend this pool. If you guys do want to try to include it, if you have some really good gear, that is how you could do that bigger pool with the third pack. The big benefit of doing that pool is to try to get righteous orbs. Righteous orbs on my server, though, only go for four gold. On another person's server, though, they do go for about 30 gold. So it's very server dependent. Now, when it's time to reset the instance, this is the most effective way that I've found possible. Basically what you do is that you have your boosties go into the live side of the dungeon. And so that's over on the Western side. And then you go into the dead side to start the dungeon, just like you normally would. They don't go over to the dead side though, because when you go ahead and log out, swap over to your alt reset and then log back in, what happens is that those boosties get put right back into the live side and you get put right back into the dead side. And so it automatically puts everyone right where they need to be. So toss lead to an alt, reset with your alt, log back in, you are on the correct side. As you can see up on the top right, they are on the correct side. And now you're ready to go with another run without the boosties having to move at all 
and all those kill locations will get them the full experience. Hopefully that video helps you guys. Once you have some gear, your kill phases can look a little bit more like this, but with bare minimum gear, you should be able to pull off that farm exactly as I showed you. If you guys have any questions though, or if you enjoyed the video, definitely come check us out live on twitch.tv slash Arleus. Hit that like button below and subscribe. One final thing, guys, is you do have the Hearth Seeker, you do have Unforgiven every single pool. You can also get a third spawn, which is called Skull, and he basically is the one casting Frost Bolts behind me over here. If you get him, it would probably be more worth it to pop Divine Shield in the first kill phase, just so that you bring him into the group so he's not casting Frost Bolt on you while you have Bop, because it'll be a little bit more difficult for you to heal. He doesn't spawn a lot of the time, probably about 20% of the time, but he can be either here, or he could be in the second pool as well. So... Here's Skull, you can burn him down. But you can see there, guys, once you have some spell power, I run about 870 when everything is popped. You can really burn down the mobs really quickly and get, you know, Consecrate up to about 318 damage a tick.